All right, here we are going to find the absolute max and also the absolute min for this trig function. So be really careful because I know a lot of you guys need help with solving trick equations. So pay close attention and we can do it together. First, we have to get the derivative. So let's go ahead and do it. F prime of t, the derivative of two cosine t is negative two sine t. Done. And then for this right here, the derivative of sine is cosine. So let's put that down. And the input right here stays the same, but we have to use the chain rule. Multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is another two. Okay, this looks pretty good, but no, not at all. And the reason is because if you want to solve a trick equation, we should have the input being the same. This right here is cosine 2t, that's not what we like. So we're gonna change it. For this one, we can actually just keep it, no big deal. This is just negative two sine t, and then we add the two. But for the cosine 2t, we can use the double angle identity for this. And in fact, for the double angle identity for cosine, there are three versions. We are going to use the version that does not involve cosine anymore. So I will tell you guys what that is though. That is going to be one minus two sine square of t. All right, so this is the double angle identity for cosine of 2t. Okay, so let's see if this will actually help us out. We'll end up with a quadratic actually. We will see that when we do this times that, we get negative four sine square t, all right? And then next we have this, which is negative two sine t. And lastly, we have that plus two. So we do have a quadratic in terms of sine t. And um, we are still going to solve for the zero because this is the calculus way to do it. <laughs> so find the critical number. We just need to worry about where the derivative is equal to zero. And it's a quadratic. We're going to factor it. And perhaps that's factor of negative two first for everybody. It's easier that way. So that's the factor of negative two. And we get positive two t sine t. We have the negative two here, but we took it out already. So it would be a plus, and then this is sine t. And then this is positive two. Factor out the negative two. It's like dividing by negative two. So we have minus one, all right? And that will be equal to zero. Now we can do this. By the way, this is sine squared. We can do this by factoring because it is a quadratic and it works. I'll show you guys my favorite tic-tac-toe method. Okay, what times what give us two sine squared t? Well, we need two sine t times sine t. That works wonders. And then we have to think about what times what give us negative one and the order matters. We are going to put one and negative one with the one being right here and negative one right here. Because this times this is how we check. And it will give us two sine t. And then when we do this times that, it gives us negative sine t. Together, we get positive sine t. So we got the correct combination. So altogether, we get negative two times this minus that, so two sine t. And when you use this, when you pick out, when you write down the answer, you go across. So two sine t minus one, and then sine t plus one. And we make this equal to zero. All right, to continue, we have to make this factor equal to zero. So we can put the minus one to the other side and then divide the two on both sides. So we get sine t being equal to one half. And then put this to be zero. We put the one to the other side. So we get sine t being equal to negative one. And now we just have to solve these two equations. And the good news is that we just have to solve them on this interval. Have a look. Sine t being equal to one half, we can use the reference triangle method. And I will remind you guys that on the side. Okay, so here is zero radians, and here is pi over two radians, namely 90 degrees. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, or on the xy plane, it is the same as saying y over r. So we can take one to be the y, and then r is just two. All right, so we have a right triangle. And this is in fact a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. This is going to give us square root of three. 
And the most important thing is that you have to know this is the shortest side, so this is the smallest angle, which is the 30 degrees. And 30 degrees is pi over 6. And that's all we need. Usually, this right here, we will have to get infinitely many solutions. But no, we just need the solution on this interval, which is that. So t equals pi over 6. And for this one, sine t is equal to negative 1. Well, sine is the y value on the unit circle. You can look at it right here. This is where the negative 1 is for the y value, which is the sine value. But this is 3 pi over 2, or negative pi over 2. So we don't have to consider that. So I will tell you uh, no solution on the interval 0 to pi over 2. So this is our only critical number, Cn. Okay, right now we just have to plug in this, this, and that back to the original function and see which one is the biggest and which one is the smallest. So here we go. Let's do the critical number first. So we have f of pi over 6. And uh, this will give us 2 times cosine of pi over 6. And then we add sine, time, sine of 2 times pi over 6. Okay, this is just 2 times cosine of pi over 6. And uh, this is sine. And then we can reduce this and that, which is pi over 3. And do you guys see that this angle is actually pi over 3 because that's 60 degrees? So we can use that triangle to help us out with this. First, we have 2, and then cosine of pi over 6. Look at this as the angle and do adjacent over hypotenuse. So we have square root of 3 over 2. And then next, we add sine of pi over 3. We look at this angle and do opposite over hypotenuse. So that's also square root of 3 over 2. And they have the same denominator, so we can just add the top together. So in fact, 2 square root of 3 plus 1 square root of 3, we get 3 square root of 3, and then over the same denominator, which is 2. Okay, and then continue. Let's go ahead and check 0, which is the nicest number. Put 0 into the original, so we have 2 times cosine of 0. And then we add sine of 2 times 0. Sine of 0 is just 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. 1 times 2. All together, we get 2. And lastly, we check pi over 2. So this is 2 times cosine of pi over 2. And then plus sine of 2 times pi over 2. Check this out. This and that cancel. Sine pi is 0. Cosine pi over 2, it's also 0. Because we look at the x value right here, which is 0. So 0 plus 0, it's just 0. And by the way, sine pi is 0 because we look at the y value right here, which is 0. OK, we have all the things that we need. Which one is the biggest? Is it this or that? Let me tell you, this one's bigger. And if you would like, you can use the calculator and you will get approximately 2.6. So here we go. Our absolute max is that f of pi over 6. And I'll put on the exact answer, which is 3 square root of 3 over 2. And we also have the absolute min, which is that, which is f of pi over 2. And we get 0. All right, done deal. That's it.